When you create a chart from a pivot table, all the columns from the pivot table are used in the chart. Even if you highlight specific columns prior to creating the chart, Excel ignores that and creates the chart by using all the columns in the pivot table. So, how do you include only certain columns from the pivot table in the chart? Last year, I did a video showing three workarounds, but now, if you're an Excel 365 subscriber, there's another way, and that's to not use pivot tables at all. Microsoft have just made the group by function available to all 365 users. Until last week, it was only available to those on the beta channel. In this video, I'm going to use the group by function to build something that resembles a multi-column pivot table, and then I'll build a chart from specific columns. No more hacks needed. By the way, if you're on 365 in a corporate environment, but don't have the group by function, it's probably because your company hasn't updated to the latest version of 365. If you want to follow along, you can download a copy of the practice file from the link in the description below. So this is what I want to create. A list of locations, and for each location, I need the revenue and the cost of sales. But I want the chart to display just the revenue for each location. So let's get started. The data is in a table called sales. In I5, I'm going to enter the group by function. So I put equals group by open brackets. The first argument is the row fields. And these are the headings that I want displayed on each row, which in this example is the values from the customer location column. So I'll type sales, open square brackets, and select customer location from the list by clicking it once close square brackets, and then a comma. The second argument is the values. And these are the columns or single column that I want it to display the values from. In this example, total revenue and total cost. So I'll type sales, open square brackets, total revenue, close square brackets, followed by a colon, and then sales, open square brackets, total cost, close square brackets, and then another comma. The next argument is the function. And this is the type of calculation or summarization that I want to do. You can see there we've got sum, we've got count, we've got average and some others. But this one is going to be the sum. So I'll click on sum, put it into the formula and then another comma. The next parameter is the field headers. Do I want it to display headers like in a pivot table? Yes, I do. So I'm going to select yes and show, which is number three. The field headers and the following arguments are actually optional, but I'm just going to talk through them. The first one is total depth. And if you're familiar with pivot tables, this is the equivalent to the total and the subtotal options. And in this example, I don't want any totals. I don't want any subtotals. So I'm going to select a zero and put a comma. The next one is sort order. By default, group by sorts the results in ascending order from A to Z based on the row fields value, like a pivot table. I want my data sorted by revenue in descending order. So what I do there is type in minus two. Two, because revenue will be the second column generated by the function, and minus to indicate descending. The other two arguments I don't actually need to use. The filter allows you to include some criteria, which I don't want to do. And field relationship, that is used when multiple columns are provided in the row fields argument, so it's not relevant here. So I'll close the brackets and press enter. So what we've ended up with is very similar to a pivot table. It's listed the locations in the first column, it's totaled up the revenue for each location, 
put that in the second column. It's also sorted the data based on the values in that column. And in the third column, we have the total cost of making each flavor of ice cream. But something odd has happened. Notice that we have two entries for Atlanta. In the formula, I specified that I wanted headings. I also referenced the table name sales. But when you reference a table in a formula, and this is true with all formulas in Excel, it doesn't include the headings. So it thinks what's on row six, which is the first data row of the table, is the headings. Hence it displaying Atlanta 11569 as the first row. So I need to amend the formula to this by adding two open square brackets, hash all, close square bracket, comma, between the name of the table and the name of the column. I'm telling Excel that I want to reference the whole table and it will treat what is on row five in the table as headings. I'm going to edit the formula by double clicking on I5. I'm going to highlight sales customer location within the formula. I'm going to point my mouse at customer location in the table and make sure that my mouse pointer is that black arrow. You do that by pointing just on the text of the heading. Click once and it puts dotted lines around the data. And then with the black arrow still there, click again. And that has now extended that column to include the headings. And if we look at the formula, it's actually put the right syntax in. I'll do the same with the sales total revenue, sales total cost. I'll highlight sales total revenue, sales total cost. Point the mouse at total revenue in the table. Get the black arrow as the cursor. Click once. Get the black arrow again, click again, and keeping my finger on my left mouse button, drag across to include total cost. And that's it. I can then press enter. So what we now get is the data from row five as the headings. If I want to change the appearance of this data, change the column widths, change the formatting, the alignment, the font size, the number formatting and so on. I can do that in the usual way to create the chart. It's simply a case of selecting the data to be included. So I'll select the names of the locations and the total revenue. Go up to insert, create a column chart. And there we go. So that's it. There's a lot of debate at the moment in the Excel community as to whether the group by function and another similar function of pivot by will replace pivot tables. There are undoubtedly benefits of group by because it's a formula. There's no need to remember to refresh when the source data changes and it solves the problem with the chart that this video set out to highlight. But not all versions of Excel include it and building a simple pivot table can be done with just a few clicks and requires no knowledge of formulas. What do you think? Let me know in the comments. I hope that video helped you out. If it did, please give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, please consider subscribing to the channel for more Excel tips and tricks. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next video. But until then, have an excellent day.